playing. And I mean, you'd hit it to extra cover and you'd run four. Yes, no problem. You just run four. Whereas now, the team that you've got, you hit it to extra cover. You don't even think about running. Is that something that you've been so focused on and dedicated to bring into Indian cricket that, that strive to make sure that in the field, we're the best? Look, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I started playing in 2008. Um, I saw 2009, 10, 11 is when we won the World Cup. When you, um, when you played that shit shot and you, we drew the game in uh, Bangalore. Um, eleven nice. is when I got eleven is when I got you out stumped down the leg side without nice. bowling a legend. We're gonna get there. <laughs> We're gonna get there. Just talk about you. Okay, okay, okay. So I saw two thousand nine, ten, eleven. Uh, these were my regular years with India, <laughs> and then and then twelve. Uh, that England tour when we uh, came to England twenty eleven. Yeah. We we lost badly there. Um, yeah, you did. Twenty twelve. Yeah, 2012 Australia tour was a difficult one as well. So I thought, you know, there's always a natural transition that happens in every team. And I was lucky that I was in, in the center of that transition when it was happening. And um, I got the opportunity to see both sides of things, like what we were lacking as a side and what the world was catching up on. And they were becoming far more superior compared to us. So the plan was clear. I mean, you know, when the next lot of players come in, this is the direction we're going to go in. And... To be honest, I was I was lucky that you know I played with a group of players who were driven, similar age group, and together from number seven or eight in the world in Test cricket for three years now we've been number one. So it's it's been quite an astonishing journey. You know, it's, it's quite unbelievable to be honest because we had no experience and we beat everyone everyone most places. You know, we competed mm. everywhere we went in the world, and it's just that that to be able to come to the top of world cricket again has been a great journey. But then again, it gave us um, a vision, a goal to achieve, and all all our focus was towards that. And, and with the yeah. IPL, you see a lot of teams that come to India now, and they're a lot more competitive. I remember we came to India and actually beat yeah, India yeah, in yeah. 2011, 2012, and that's because True. a lot of us actually feel at home in India as foreigners. True. India have an issue traveling abroad. They have a real issue traveling abroad. What do you think the biggest issue for you guys is traveling abroad? I'm Look, talking now, results. Um, now, to be honest, you know, before when we used to tour, it used to happen sporadically. Like we would come to England every three or four years and in yeah. between there was nothing. But India, they would, you guys would come every year for the IPL and get used to the conditions and so on and so forth. But now with, when there's so much cricket happening, we don't feel any conditions are alien, to be honest. Now, right. I feel like now um, traveling uh, to other countries and playing at home is a level field. Anyone can beat anyone anywhere. Because we're yeah. playing each other so much in different conditions all the time. Australia, I remember we went to Australia for a whole tour. And then suddenly, three weeks after that, they were in India playing ODIs against us. Yeah. That would never happen before. So now it's not a, it's not a you know, question of whether we know the conditions or not. It's all about the mindset, the fatigue, whether you, you play too much cricket, whether you're ready mentally, physically or not. So I think those are the challenges now. Now we don't feel like any condition is sort of alien to us. And that, I think, is the most exciting part. Do you feel like you play too much? I remember in my career, I was having huge, huge arguments and disagreements with the ECB because of my schedule. And all I wanted mm. to, the ECB to manage was my schedule because I was playing every T20 game, every one-day international, every uh, test match cricket. And I didn't want to miss out on the IPL, which is what guys yeah. don't miss out on now. Do you feel like you play too much cricket? Look, I've been taking breaks. Honestly, um, I felt like last two, three seasons I was doing too much. So I started yep. taking, uh, taking um, breaks every now and then, T20 matches here and there, uh, maybe a ODI series here and there, because I didn't want to miss any test cricket, to be honest. And um, T20 cricket, in between, I just felt like there were too many games that had no relevance. And um, mm. i would spoken about it in the press as well, quite a few times, that you know you just can't have matches where you have zero... Um, sort of motivation or energy uh, and yeah. I don't like to play like that yeah but I've just thought about it I've been playing three formats for nine years now uh, including the IPL along with captaincy for six years so it's 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 not easy it's not easy no. but uh, no. I'll see I'll see I said two two three years more I think till the, the next World Cup I'm gonna give it all and then figure out where I stand which format 
what not all those questions later and and and, and obviously the one of the biggest changes that you've made and i know that i mean i campaign for um wildlife all the time and the thing that people hammer me the most about is eating meat now mm. you're vegetarian you made that decision because believe me in yeah. 2009 2010 when we hung out you were a vegetarian <laughs> you know no, no. you now you now a vegetarian No, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't a vegetarian till 2018 when we actually came to England um I left eating meat just before the test series started and Why? I'd been think I'd been thinking about it I'll tell you the real reason I mean people use different kinds of reasons and they try yeah. and figure out themselves so in 2018 when we went to South Africa I got um a cervical spine issue um while playing a test match you got what centurion a cervical spine issue one of the discs in my cervical spine they bulged out and it compressed a nerve which was running straight till the little finger of my right hand so it give me it gave me a, a tingling sensation i could i could barely feel my little finger on the right hand wow i couldn't sleep at night yeah it was hurting like mad i couldn't sleep at night and then i got my test done um and my stomach was too acidic so i was I, my body was creating too much uric acid my body was too acidic So wow. what was happening was even though i was taking calcium magnesium everything one tablet was not sufficient for my body to function properly so my stomach started pulling calcium from my bones and my bones got weaker and that's why i got this issue so wow. that's why i stopped eating meat completely um in the middle of the england tour to cut down that uric acid and the acidity in my body and then i've never felt better in my life to be honest i felt amazing it's it's almost been 2 years now and it's the best decision i've taken in my life Really? It's amazing. I mean, you look you, you Yeah, you look amazing and I I mean, I've tried that now. So, uh, I've seen all this and I watched that film that uh, Game Changers or whatever that film. Yeah, I think yeah. you were part of that film. And um I mean, I I have vegetarian days. Jess and I have vegetarian days at home and you do feel so light. You feel amazing, don't you? Yeah, amazing. I mean, I've never felt better uh waking up I never yeah. felt better when I have to recover after a game. I mean, if you make me play three games a week, which are intense, I'm at it 120% every game. I can I can recover within a day after a test match and go on another test match. It's it's so much better than being on meat. Uh, being vegetarian now made me feel. Honestly, I felt like why didn't I do it before? You know, I should have done it two yeah. three years earlier. Yeah. To be honest, it's completely changed everything. You start feeling better. You start thinking better. Your body is lighter. you're more positive you have more energy to do more so yes overall it's just been an amazing amazing change are you guys doing it as well thank goodness i don't have to play three games a week because there's no way in this world a south african can go without meat dude i do it for maybe <laughs> one day one day or two days a week if i'm feeling really generous i'll give it two days but there's no way i just can't do it i mean i got a beautiful barbecue out here we oh i, I mean i just I, as much as i would love to as much as you're trying to sell sell a great story Mm. It just uh, it, it just I mean I and and then I do feel great and that movie mate that that a game changes film that I watched it, it really does paint a really good picture but I just couldn't do it mate. Couldn't do it. <laughs> no way. Yeah, it's, it's but, I mean but you talk you talk about that um that uh that ability to be able to turn on every single day. I was running on a treadmill in uh, in Jeez, I don't know where it was, and uh, MS came and j- jumped on the treadmill next to me. And mm-hmm. first of all, to see MS in the gym at that stage, I was like, "Oh, Jesus, what are you doing in here?" Um, <laughs> and 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 we started talking about you, and started talking about your leadership. It was at the time that he was just starting to finish in that. And he said, mm-hmm. um, one of the things that he said that would interest him would be whether or not you would be able to. Um, maintain that uh, energy on the field that excitement on the field that aggressive mm-hmm. leadership on the field and i said mm-hmm. to myself jesus i said surely you cannot love cricket that much that you want to just start swinging punches every time you walk out onto the field <laughs> and you and you've done it how is why is it because of your diet or is it because of what's in your ear, in between your ears <laughs> not that there's much there what what is it Yeah, there's a bit of crazy up here as well. I I wouldn't deny I, it. I know. But <laughs> look, as I said, I mean, you I know, I know and you can ask MS that as well. When I played under MS, I was in his ears every over. Maybe we can do this, maybe we can do that. 
if you know there was a time where you had to field on the boundary i would run from long on to long on i wanted to be in the right place at the right time even now even if i'm captain or not i don't think standing on the field i need to behave myself because i'm captain i need to be able to enjoy the game first and think about yeah. strategy and all that later because that is who i am so i cannot play any other way i will give yeah. 120% every ball and yeah. i made a promise to myself the day i stop feeling like i can do it i'll stop playing I really? want to be able to play till the time I play the way I play right now oh, with the same intensity. So, 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 we, so, so we're going to have to keep talking over the next few years about how you want to jump in a in a in a UFC ring every time you up on a on a cricket field. <laughs> I yeah, just like to get it going. <laughs> I was going to swear a little bit, but I'll stop. That's what my my teammates and bowlers say as well. They say you celebrate more than us when we take a wicket. I mean, I said I can't thing. control myself. It's a, yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. I spoke you to Ravi last week. I spoke to Ravi yeah. last week and we were talking about sledging uh-huh. and we we're talking about um aggression on the field and he said, "Well, we do have a fairly aggressive leader." <laughs> I just started <laughs> pissing myself. I was like, "Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes, just a very <laughs> I mean, that helps. Like that helps. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that surely helps. That surely helps. Anyone who's feeling a bit whether I should say something or not, they just need to look at me and say, No problems. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but clearly you love the dudes off the field, and uh, you just get into mm-hmm. that. It's called white line fever, isn't it? Where you get over that white line, and I know there's yep. millions of people who are going to watch this and are, are, are seeing this. You just have the white line fever where you will just do anything within the rules to win the game for India. It's simple. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And you know, it's look. I you know, I've known you. I've known you. I've known you for. a lot of years now and you know people say, i've experienced something very strongly when people don't know you they have a, a very very different picture of you that they paint in their heads mm. and i have no problems in people thinking that the person might be like this but when you don't know the person when you haven't interacted with the person for someone to say that the, the guy is like that i yeah. don't agree with that because yeah. you can't create a reality for someone else in your own head and then treat them accordingly Okay. I never do that. I would, yeah. I would, I would meet people. I would, I would get to know you, even though I see your body language on the field, and I feel like, oh, that 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 doesn't seem really nice. But if you meet me outside the field and we got mm-hmm. along, yeah. I got along with Bouch. You know, there was there were different views about Bouch as well. I got along with him amazingly well, with you as well. So it's about accepting people the way they are, and I think that's important. You yeah, step yeah. off the field. and you accept people as just human beings when your competitive spirit comes out there's no problem in being being competitive being aggressive you've had duels on the field it never gets mm. to you know physically punching someone in the face i mean it would never get to that it's it's maybe. basically just get, yeah maybe with you it could have a few times <laughs> but not with me not with me i'm too small i can't take on the big guys physically <laughs> that helps does it does it um does the ipl and the friendships that you created in the ipl make it a little bit more difficult to when you're playing against australia to give a volley to a teammate in another opposition or does it not matter when you play for india you're playing for india and i don't care if you play for rcb with me without me whatever it is i'm going to beat you and that's it um look ipl has definitely made things much better when it comes to respecting people especially when you get to know someone you know you you, yeah. you don't feel internally i mean i played against ab never in my dreams will i think of sledging ab it just won't come to me naturally yeah i would just say okay if an opportunity comes to me i'm trying trying to take that opportunity with very both my hands any day of the week i want to get him out but i won't get yeah. into his face in a way that you know it can spoil our friendship our our relationship because you exactly. have to understand at the end of the day those things last too long in life so whoever you get to know obviously it's it's a mutual respect both ways the line is not crossed mm. but otherwise you know we always looking for something yeah. spicy to get in the zone eventually because you want to be at your best and if that that's what gets you why not what's been your most fun innings i'm not going to ask you what's been your best innings what's been your most fun yeah. innings because i actually got asked this in an interview a couple of months ago I was doing something and i said what's been your most fun innings and and mm-hmm. i was like shit i've never been asked this before it's always what's your best innings what had the most impact mm-hmm. What's been your what's been the most fun the the one where you just got that was so much fun it's just like jesus i just got there and i just went bang 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 
Do you have any? Uh, it's yeah, a I tough question, is it? Yeah, I do have one. Um, it was against uh, Kings Eleven in the IPL. Um, it was, I think, a thirteen, a fourteen over game or fifteen over game, and I got a hundred and twelve overs. I remember. And yeah, so that was one of the days where I felt like, geez, I'm just just you know connecting everything, and you just felt like you couldn't get out. And I've never felt like that before. Just to be able to hit every ball and not yeah. have that fear of getting out. It was amazing. So that has been my most fun innings. What about you? And talking, uh, uh, mate, it was such tell a long time ago. Tell me yours. Huh? Do you remember? No, I sure still don't remember any of your innings after I got, I got you out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to talk about Let's your bowling there, it. but 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 the one before I get to your uh, your your beautiful length that you used to bowl and that very 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 um, traditional um, uh, action. Excellent. Mm. What? You talk about fear, and there'll be a lot of youngsters watching this, and people say, "Oh, play without fear. Don't worry about the consequences." For youngsters watching this, in your position, walking out to bat. Now you're lucky. You've you've made it in the game. You the best that are, that's playing at the moment. Your numbers are fantastic. At the start of your career, or in the middle of your career, even now, what's been your lowest? The lowest you've been. What what's the lowest you've been in your career? I think the lowest point in my career was the England tour in 2014, where that's that's one phase where I felt like you know when as a batsman you know you're gonna get out in the morning when you wake up. That was the time I felt like that that there's Shit. no chance I'm getting runs. Really? And yeah, to be able to, and still to get out of bed and you know just get dressed for the game and to go out there to to go through that knowing that you will fail. Was yeah. something that just just ate me up. It just demolished me completely, and I told I promised myself I'm never going to allow myself to feel like that ever again in life. But that was the lowest point where I and that happened for all the younger guys listening to think right in the game. That happened because I was too focused on doing well from a personal point of view. Wow. I wanted to get run. I could never yeah. think of. What does the team want me to do in this situation? I just got too engulfed with England tour. If I perform here, you know, Test cricket in my mind, I'm going to feel established and all that, all that crap on the outside, which yeah. was not important at all. It just ate me up. It just, I just kept going into a, into a downward spiral, and I just couldn't get out of it. Horrible. Um, and, and technique-wise, did you? Did, is it all about? Is it all about just making sure that you? Prepare well. I talk about training well, making sure that the day before you don't leave any stone unturned, so that whatever happens in in the bright lights just happens. But you've got to be able to practice well. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. But you know, when you're playing so many games now, and me and Adi have spoken about this quite a bit, we don't come to every session, and we don't bat for long periods anymore. So if I have two sessions of batting, and I, and I go to the first one, and the first one's precise, I would take the next day off. Relax. Make sure I'm physically right and good to go. Hundred and twenty percent. I would not go to the ground just for the sake of it. If I'm not getting anything out of that practice session, I will not go to the stadium anymore. So that's obviously a gradual change. But at the start of my career, I wanted to learn. I wanted to see as much as much as I could. I wanted to observe other people, and that was a different kind of preparation back then. But mm. now it's become sort of different. And I think technique also. It's It's everything's men mental. I mean, you've you've played in a time where you were walking and hitting fast bowlers. Coaches don't teach you that. So it's yeah. it's it's innovation. It's staying ahead of the opponent. It's thinking one step ahead of the opponent. And these things, if you're aware, if you're thinking about how to win the game for your team, these things come to you. If you're too personal uh, in your approach, you're too self-centered. You're thinking only about yourself. Then you're just looking for ways to get out eventually. Because people are going to find you out. You're not getting out of your comfort mm. zone. Because we don't want to fail, so this is this is this is a, a gradual sort of transition that happens over the years. But as a youngster, you know, I was at every practice session. I was in there. I just yeah. wanted to be watching people, observing, asking questions, asking questions. I think conversations are the most important thing for any cricketer. Yeah, you say I used to run it, run it, Bettis, and they don't coach that. They also don't coach the switch hit, something that you can't do. So um, at least there's something I can do that you can't do. Yeah, I know, and something that you will never be able to do, and I did, which was to get you out. <laughs> that's my, that's. Hey! I just want to tell every single person watching this that I, I, I mean, I would love to show you our WhatsApps. 
He's mentioned about 75,000 times in the last three or four days since we, just, since we said we'd do this interview. When can I talk about how I got you out? When can I? And I, I, I can't remember. You can't remember? I don't know exactly. I think it was Southampton, T20, if I'm not wrong. You stumped I'm down the leg sure side. <laughs> it was your famous one leg flick where you took your, you took your back leg off the crease and MS got you stumped. And by the way, I'm the only bowler in cricket history. Know this. I'm the only bowler in the history of cricket to get a wicket in international cricket without bowling a legitimate delivery and you were the batsman. I got Seriously? you stumped on a wide ball. It was zero balls, one wide, one wicket. <laughs> no one's done that. No one. <laughs> wow, thank is, you so much. The thing is, there's method in my madness, mate. I just wanted to be able to produce something for you that was something we could talk about all if in, in the future years. When you join us in the commentary box, it'll be something we talk about that we show. I mean, it's, it's, it's friendship. You know, I saw you. I saw you walking off. And you'd played with me two years and you wouldn't even look at me. I was celebrating. You were so embarrassed. You just looked down and you walked away. <laughs> and I laughed so hard after that game. I was like, bloody hell, he didn't want to look at me because I would have laughed in your face. <laughs> oh, wow. Good I think I might have broken a bat there, actually, because I just thought, Jesus, I can just <laughs> see this coming. Forever, he's going to abuse me. Forever. And it's still happening. And that was, what, nine, ten, nine years ago. Prick. <laughs> The thing is, as well, it's it's MS too. So I, I mean, we're having some fun with commentary uh, with MS ah, uh, yes. a few years ago, and Jesus, he never got me out. So there's a lot of people who'll be watching this too that always say, "Oh, you're MS Dhoni's first Test wicket." I refer, oh. I, refer I, know, remember, I, I, ref I referred yeah. it, and it was not out. Remember? Yeah, yeah. And they were, "I'm your first Test wicket. I'm your first." Test. He even fucking said it on commentary when I was uh, when I was yeah, but my went look, the it. thing is. The thing is, MS has a point because it came up on the stump mics, but nothing came up on the hotspot. So he has a point. Bullshit. You, no, don't mm -hmm. you start backing him. Yours was out. <laughs> you got me out. He never got me Mine out. Mine was legitimate. You can never yes. question that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you didn't even look to go back. You just walked off. No, I was, I was never getting out to MS. To you, I don't mind. But yeah, at least that action, I could at least sort of talk about. Well, I, I mean, I didn't really pick it up. It came at an angle. It came at that kind of angle. MS had a bit of a conventional thing. So I was like, I cannot get out to that. That is filth. That is the fast bowling. Who's the best? Who's your favorite batting partner? Before we'll finish off with fans on social media now. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite batting partner? Favorite batting partner? Um, two people that I've enjoyed the most batting with. Um, I love guys who can run really well and who understand um, understand my calling and you know intend to run. So I think MS, when playing for India, we've run the best together. And AB otherwise, I mean AB and me are like, yeah. we don't even need to say anything. It's just the partnership flows. We don't talk cricket as well in yeah. between, and it's just it's just amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, brother, let's just. I've got a load of stuff here that I just want to go over, just yeah. fans, social media. And, and, and I mean, mm -hmm. I, I suppose we play to entertain. We play yeah. for the fans. Um, we're sitting in a situation at the moment where we're having to entertain on Instagram Live because you can't go and slap bowlers all over um, the Chennaswamy Stadium because of what's happening in the world. But how important are fans to you? How important? I mean, I just did a little thing here now, social media. I looked on Instagram now. Ronaldo, 210 million followers. Messi, 146 million followers. You've got 53 million followers. You've got Federer at 7 million. Hamilton at 15 million. Tom Brady at 7 million. McElroy at 2 million. Mm -hmm. Bolt at 9 million. Mm -hmm. Does that come with responsibility? It does. It does. Um, you know, honestly, I, I see a lot of... Um, backing and love from genuine fans um, on social media. Now, the good thing about social media now is that they're able to show you that support and that love um, in times that other people are not really willing to. So I think I felt this over the years that, you know, the number of people that like you and that appreciate what you do, their intent, their energy, it really motivates you and it, it pushes you in the right direction, to be honest, because without their contribution without their energy and them wishing well for you, you wouldn't be able to do what you're doing on a daily basis. There's no chance. 
to be mm. able to get this motivation every day you walk into a stadium people are just shouting your name 30 40000 of them you just get into a zone there's no mm. denying that so i mean these are things that you can't replicate anywhere else and i absolutely have total respect for that you know fans that genuinely love the game genuinely love what you do and they respect good and bad equally <clears throat> i hats off to them honestly big respect I tell you something um you talk about the fans going crazy I mean when you walk on the field anywhere in India or wherever I mean it's it's chaos and I remember playing with Tendulkar with um mm. uh, Sevag with UV mm. and 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 MS and it being exactly the same way it, it, one thing I will tell you is that when that happens now and you say you get into the zone just appreciate it because I think there's one thing that I miss yeah. I remember playing all those days and you walk onto the field i remember just playing at the ferocia cotler for for delhi and ha- having that one bumper season and for the rest of the time it was just like every time i walked out okay okay like you've got to just you you really have got to just you've got to you you've almost got to just bottle it up and just remember it because dude those are the best days of your life when people are going crazy mm. like that absolutely i totally agree with you i think these are things that one needs to appreciate we are a bunch of uh the lucky few that get to experience this yeah even today with you know you speak about difficult times now and you understand that the kind of place you are in right now you you said you have space to move around you have a garden you have a pool mm. i see the current situation where people don't have jobs you know they're yeah. struggling on a daily basis yeah you you can't have any other feeling than to be grateful just have lo- you know the most amount of gratitude you can because god has put us in a place where we don't have to go through those those moments and if in this place as well we sit down and complain about things i don't think that that's fair so mm. you know just just looking at what's happening all over the world it just makes you feel you know where was i really heading which direction does my life really want to go in and i think this this time will really make us all reflect on it so yeah this is this is indeed a blessing that we have I'm going to finish off now. We're going to finish off just with some fans questions. I went through a load of them. There's about five or six here and then I just want one other one other thing and then you're done and dusted. You can go back to uh, sweeping the floor and mopping and and mopping your bathroom. <laughs> Ronaldo or Messi? Ronaldo. Why? Work ethic, uh drive, passion, um all the crap noise on the outside deflect it move ahead know what you need to do and just get done will you shave your beard off no never why chiku chiku no i don't have i don't have cheeks anymore but chiku. you know i look i look horrible without a beard so i would i would never never have shaved it off never. <laughs> um favorite destination to go with your missus no cricket favorite destination uh no cricket uh queenstown we went last the year before we went to new zealand or oh, last year 2019 queenstown hands down number one and then wildlife safari in south africa we need to come to your lodge next yeah well let's hope we let's hope we get some time it's crazy there eh? i mean it's a so many that that whole tra- uh, tourism industry the whole travel industry i mean there in kaziranga where i was a couple of weeks ago that's completely shut down for tourism mm-hmm. and then south africa is completely shut for tourism and goodness mm-hmm. and so many of my mates there now I mean, we've had to close our lodge we've had to when I mean, we're looking after our staff yeah. and making sure that they've got 100% pay because they are just amazing but she's it's it's, mm-hmm. it's a it's a sad situation but you'll do that I'll, you guys will get out there for sure um yeah, yeah. favorite cricketing memory Actually coincidentally you just called me on the day that we won the world cup so that has to be a favorite cricketing memory for me Was just that t- what 2011 Yeah today Really okay. What a day to call KB Kick it And and yeah. and I I'll, and I'll, I'll only like this one if you answer it the right way and I'll be very careful how you answer this because this could mm-hmm. end badly for you Your favorite commentator My favorite commentator is It's easy. <laughs> um my favorite com- no it's not you. Come on. My fa- favorite commentator is 
Nice. Okay, me. That's perfect. Too long to answer Absolutely. question. Thank you, me. That's fine. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <right. laughs> go on. Digger. 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 Go on. Digger. Digger. Um, and then I'm going to say, there's two more things now. Tell me about that. You told me about this the other day that I'm very interested in because I've never known anything about it. Your foundation that looks after all the um, uh, non-cricketing athletes. What's that all about? Yep. Yeah. Um, set up the foundation in 2013, uh, got it registered in 2016, then we started collecting funds, we started doing um, events, dinners, charity, fu charity functions, uh, fundraisers, a uh, few options here and there. And then eventually we started giving out these scholarships. So we understood the challenges. So in, in India and in cricket, we have decent facilities to be able to make a career out of you know, playing cricket and you have enough academies and places to practice. But other sports, there are not many places that you can go and have quality practice, quality facilities. So we wanted to identify uh, for sport in general in the country, who are these people? And we have a, a panel of uh, you know, elite sports people who have played for the country, represented in different sports over the years. So they select people, they, they track their progress. Young kids, 14, 15, 16, who have potential to eventually go on and become world-class athletes maybe Olympic medal winners or, or something like that as well. So wow. we take care of their progress. We provide nutrition. We have a few types wow. with hospitals, uh, nutrition companies. We provide coaches to them as well. We provide counseling as well through these experts that I mentioned. So, yeah, we track their progress. And, uh, you know, one all over one India? The guy... Sorry? All over India? All over India, yeah. All sports. Wow. So we obviously track their performance. Anyone who's who's doing really well and we feel like they don't have the right kind of facilities, we just pull them out, bring them into the program and just give them a scholarship where we say, we're going to take care of you, we're going to send you to tournaments, take care of your travel, nutrition, you don't need to worry about anything. So we just give them an opportunity, a platform and a chance. Amazing. Well done, mate. Well done. The last, I, I, thought, I actually thought there's one more thing, but there's, there's one other thing. Um, golf. Am I going to get you into the game of golf? Never. Never. Why? What's wrong with you? Because you haven't played golf with me. I played golf with um, Boucher, Callis, uh, Dale in 2008. We went to a golf course in Bangalore. And I just couldn't keep my legs in place. I just kept hitting everything over covers because I would clear my leg and slog it like we're doing cricket. And they said, you got to fetch the ball and play it again. I was like, no way I'm playing the sport again. <laughs> they bloody sent me into the bushes three times. I was like, thank you. <laughs> Take your golf club. I'm going in. you your, your missus has just put a message up there. Chalo, 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 dinner time. So I'm going to ask you one more question. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, um, beautiful. The, the last one, and I think probably the mm -hmm. most important, your favorite form of the game and why? Test cricket, test cricket, test cricket, test cricket, test cricket. <laughs> Five times. Amazing. Amazing. Why, buddy? Yeah. Why? Because test cricket for me is actually it's a representation of life, to be honest. You gotta you gotta keep going when you don't score runs, you gotta clap for everyone else when you haven't scored a run. You gotta give everything that you have, you gotta go back into your room, have that same routine, wake up every morning, come out to play whether you've done well or not, and in life you have to do the same. You just don't have an option of not competing or not participating. So for me test cricket is life and I've learned the most. Playing test cricket it's made me a better person. Amazing. And you know what? I said that the other day when um, they said that they wanted four-day test matches and you came out very strongly and you said, no, I'm not interested in four-day test matches. I only wanted five-day test matches. They try to get me to do something quite lengthy in, one of, in a debate show. And I said, guys, the facts of the matter are that Verat doesn't want five-day four -day test matches, so four-day test matches ain't happening. And on that note, <laughs> go and enjoy your vegetables. <laughs> Have a banana. <laughs> I love you, brother. Cheers, KP. Thanks. Good to see you. Bye, buddy. Bye, mate. Bye, bye, bye. bye. Cheers. Bye.